going on everybody i'm prioxis and i'm back with another video now this is going back to my more so educational so i'm not going to be going crazy like i usually do in my videos this is going to be more so settled you know what i'm saying and really locked in on my fights even though i'm always locked in but as far as like just speaking to you guys with what i'm going to be doing in a video so if you don't want to see the first parts of this and i understand you don't i don't care about seeing perks and stats you can go ahead and skip to the fights if you would like but if not i'm going to go ahead and run through his perks and then all of his uh punches and kicks and things like that so first things first he has fast hands carved of wood wake up call and he also has recharge and you guys can feel free to pause the video and uh read those on your own then we go over to his stand up and i'm not going to read every single stat I'm just going to point to the things that stand out now if you have no clue who paulo costa is he is a predominantly striking fighter has very very good power honestly i wouldn't say paulo costa has one punch knockout power he doesn't really one punch knockout people he just puts uh immense pressure on opponents and you know the power is just consistent power boom 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 and uh, he gets guys out of there so as we go through here we see he has punch speed of 94 the punch power is 97 the accuracy is 95 those things really stand out but he also has kick power 95 and then the kick speed is 92 as well and you see the switch stance isn't that great and the footwork isn't as well so it's going to be hard to track down fighters like izzy and also we got to be careful with getting leg kicked we go over to the grappling and like i said before paulo costa is predominantly a striker not really a wrestler but he does have ground strike in 91 but other than that it's not that great all right <laughs> not that great and then we go over to his health stats and you see he has some very good health the cardio is fine the chin is 96 which is very high the body health is 94 the recovery is 96 and then the leg health is 92 so paulo costa is going to be a fighter that is going to be hard to get out of there in this game and then we move over to his top moves his body roundhouse is a level four his rear hook is a level four his haymaker is a level five his rear body hook is going to be a level four strike and then the cross is going to be a level four strike as well and i'm going to go ahead and jump into practice mode and show you guys like each moves and the strikes that you personally would want to use all right let's get it all right so here we are we're in practice mode we're going to go press start go down to game help view moves and then we're already under paulo costa now you guys see his jab isn't that great it's only a level two the cross is level four the lead hook is level three the rear hook is level four like we said before the lead uppercut level three the rear uppercut is level three those are basically average um the jab is going to the body jab i'm sorry is level two the body cross is level three lead body hook is level three the rear body hook is level four like we said before lead body uppercut level three level three so as we go through all of these things you will notice that basically paulo costa has you know basic boxing but he does have some power strikes like basically that right hand to the body that right hand up top is some very powerful strikes and we go over well punches we go over to his kicks now you see his calf kick is level three with both legs the lead roundhouse to the body is level three and as we said before the body roundhouse is going to be level four lead roundhouse to the head is going to be level three and then uh, rear roundhouse is level three as well front kicks okay the knees and basically um how i would use paulo costa and honestly i don't really have to go over to the clinching because like i said I, like we said before he he isn't really going to be like trying to clinch or i'm personally not going to be trying to clinch my opponents or take down as you see it's very weak takedowns but the clinch and things are about average we go over to the submissions and he's not a submission artist at all so you guys see his submissions are terrible but we go over to the combos and you see boxing combos are level three but i don't me personally i don't really go off of boxing combinations in this game i don't go through here and look for hmm, okay i come up with my own combinations and they're probably in this combo list but they're just my personal combinations and i do have a combo video if you want to check that out but with that being said i'm going to jump into the first ranked match and every matchup is going to be different how i play so be sure to listen up for things that i say and cues and things that i do all right so let's go ahead and get into it okay so here we go with the first matchup unfortunately it's someone that's division 14 but my strategy and i don't underestimate any opponent is going to stay the same so who are we going against kevin holland what is he great at kickboxing he has he's a very lengthy fighter and Paulo Costa is a very short fighter, so what I'm going to have to pressure him. Like mo most of Paulo Costa fights, he's pressuring his opponent. Now, the strikes that I like to use and I'm personally going to use is one is going to be obviously the jab. 
two is going to be the lead hook to the body. Honestly, the lead hook may be one because I need to work his body hook and I also um, need to be inside. Now, I can kick as well, but again, um, Kevin Holland is a very lengthy fighter. So I'm going to have to really look to be careful uh, from the outside because he can throw strikes from, well, you know, much farther away than I can. Now, this guy here is throwing a, a bit of strikes. It's a three round fight, so boom, lead hook to the body. Boom. Now, he can't trade with me. That's the thing. Paulo Costa, and I say this, I actually used to use Paulo Costa a lot, but I'm sorry, you can't, not many fighters in UFC 4 or in the middleweight division can trade with Paulo Costa, he actually hits like a Mack truck in this game, um, I actually would use Paulo Costa to counter, um, Robert Whitaker, do the Robert, nice low kicks, I gotta be careful, right, I'm gonna start checking those low kicks, because I really, really don't want this guy to, Get my legs hurt. But like we, um, like we said before, the cross is level four. The real hook is going to be a level four strike. But I'm not depending on those strikes to do crazy damage. I'm just going to look to work his body. Boom. Cross lead hook. There we go. There we go. Ooh, let me back up. Now I'm sitting in the pocket just eating punches for free. And that's, that's the reach advantage that he has. He was hitting me from a pretty good distance. Boom, lead hook to the body. And you guys will see my boxing will be very basic because I, you don't need crazy boxing when using uh, Paulo Costa. It's pretty pretty basic what you need to do. Nope, real hook, lead hook to the body. Like I said, the lead hook is gonna be my best friend. Also, I'm hitting his open side. And this guy's a bit aggressive, but I'm okay with that. Boom, lead hook to the body. And you guys can see, man, Paulo Costa his reach is is terrible boom lead hook to the body but like i said he also has kicks he has to switch kick but man it's gonna be hard because one his footwork is not that great so he's a bit slow when moving around nice high kick but kevin holland is not to be underestimated never to be underestimated one two no what strikes is this guy going up? Throwing a lot. He's throwing a lot of one twos. He's throwing some high kicks. He's throwing front kicks. But I'm going to, uh, yeah, Kev, um, Paulo Costa is extremely, extremely hard fighter to use because of his reach in this division. And Kevin Holland has very long arms. But the first round, I believe it went to him. Oh yeah, it went to him. He landed, he threw a lot more strikes than I threw, but he also also landed more significant strikes than him. But this round, I'm going to crank it up a little bit because this isn't a five-round fight. So, because of that, I can't, you know, there we go, we get the rock body, body. Rear hook is level four. Okay. Boom, rear hook. Okay, he blocks it. So Kevin Holland, man, is a problem. But he's on the cage, so I can, you know, tee off a little bit. But this is this is the problem with Paulo Costa, man. It's the reach. It's the reach. It's the having to walk forward into his pocket, you know, to actually land on him while he's way back there and he can land on me. But I can utilize some kicks. I did get the rock in this round. I could also look to counter while being aggressive. Like I did, that's how I got the rock. I would counter with the uppercut, boom, hook to the body with those switch kicks here. And I won't throw many kicks. The, sw ah, the switch kick will be probably the predominant kick that I look to throw. Um, because I, I don't want to really throw roundhouses. I don't want to eat punches because I can throw a roundhouse and he probably could still punch me. And I probably wouldn't be able to land on him because of how lengthy Kevin Holland is. So, see, right there. Oh. Oh, that was clean. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Okay. You know our, you know our haymaker is a level four strike as well. But you guys can see we're having success when we, when we counter him. We're counter him with the uppercut. Boom. 
Like I said, he's throwing a lot of one twos, so we're looking to slip. Go to the body. We'll hook up top. I feel like he's about to throw like a front kick. Okay, throw the high kick. Cross. Then I'll throw a roundhouse there. Because I knew he was on a retreat. That's exactly why. Okay, I tried to slip that front kick as you guys seen, but it didn't give me the animation I was looking for, the evasion. Okay, we land that rear hook. And I mainly want to throw my kicks. When you're facing somebody like this, you want to throw your kicks when you think they're 100% going to be on the retreat versus uh, not. Because if you throw a kick, right, and they come forward with punches, you're going to eat their punches. Ooh, one, two, lady, four. Boom, we're dropping. Let's go for the finish. We're going to the ground and pound. Yeah, I think this fight's over. Good fight. Good fight. Again, this guy wasn't that great of a uh, player. I mean, he was Division 14. But you could also see the trouble that Kevin Holland gives Paulo Costa. And uh, it's different. It'd be different with Robert Whitaker. Robert Whitaker does have probably, I believe he has better footwork than, than Kevin Holland. But the length of Kevin Holland uh, really gives Paulo Costa trouble. Seeing how I think Kevin Holland reaches. I, can, I don't want to even guess and be wrong. But it's much longer than Paulo Costa. Paulo Costa has... You know, uh, dinosaur T-Rex arms, so it's hard to get on the inside without him being able to land first. Ladies but you guys can see the obvious power advantage that I did have. I got the rock, I got the knockdown going into the ground and pound. But with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and move forward into the next fight. Hopefully, I can get a Robert Whitaker and have a uh, much more competitive fight. But here we go, and we're back. Ooh, okay, okay. So someone division twenty. <clears throat> He has 2,108 points. Now, he is going with the Yoel Romero pick. So, let's talk about this pick a little bit. Yoel Romero, he can wrestle. But what is Yoel Romero's weakness? Think about that. It's his cardio. He doesn't have great cardio. He doesn't have great boxing. He just has immense power. And that's what we have to be careful for. But with power, you have, the question is, what strikes is he going to throw? Is he going to try to box with me? Is he going to counter? What is he going to throw with Yoel Romero in a matchup like this, right? Where Yoel Romero obviously isn't going to be throwing crazy. I can be looking to land, you know, body roundhouses. Predominantly, I want to land a switch kick because it has a lot of power. But now, oh, nice. You guys can see he's he looks like he's opting into uh, a boxing heavy style with, with Yoel. And also, he's... um. Cross, delay roundhouse. See, with his style that he's playing with, I know that he is going to be looking, you know, he's not looking for a finish. He's just trying to outbox or out kickbox me. When we check that kick, we're gonna pressure his block. I just I just want to personally hurt his body though. Now that's what I have to be careful. Like I said before, the last fight is throwing kicks. You know what I'm saying? And he hits me with combinations. Now, this is not Kevin Holland. Kevin Holland has power, but Yoel has power. You know what I mean? So, I'm just being careful. And this is a five-round fight also. So, I know that I have more time to work. Now, throwing strikes like that will help me out gassing him out throwing flying knees. Boom. We hook to the body. Rear hook to the body. Remember, his rear hook is going to be a level five or a level four. I'm sorry. Level four strike. One, two. Roundhouse to the body, hook to the body, get back up. And now he switched. Okay, I was going to say he switched stances with Yoa Romero. And uh, I'm not sure what his switch stance is. That was a nice combination. But. Okay. And this is a real strategical type of match, as you guys can see. Again, throwing strikes like that is going to do nothing but help me. I'm going to keep my boxing basic. I'm really going to look to land that rear hook to the body because it, uh, like we've said before, it's a level four strike and it's to his open side that basically wherever his rear hand is, the combination that I've, I've talked about before is a jab to the body followed by a rear hook and it has a real smooth like animation as far as how it plays out. So it's something you, I, uh, I could use and also you could use as well. Okay. And this round is coming to an end. Boom. Switch kick. 
Let's throw a jab. I'm gonna look for the jab haymaker. Okay. I was I was out of range, but you guys notice how he blocked low because I'm usually throwing like a one strike and then going to the body. Go good round. That was a good round. And we check the stats very quickly. You'll see that he threw 93. Think about that. He threw 93 strikes and only landed 22. I threw 48 and was able to land 22. So just think about the accuracy stats there. Okay. Yeah, cross hit to the body. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to land my rear hook because the uh one short arms two the animation for the rear hook you know is he really the rear hook to the body is what i'm saying it's like they kind of short arm that animation okay jab cross lead hook before switch ah i see messed up there okay and you can see he's much more active with the hands but i'm blocking a lot of these strikes faint okay faint across Jab, jab, real hook. I figured he'd think I'd go to the body and he would, you know, drop his hands low, but he didn't. And that's okay. Boom, real hook to the body. Fake the real hook after that. You don't want to double up to the body, especially with a strike like that. Especially against a good player. I know I, I like to go body, 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 but versus a good player, I'm not going to do that often. I usually do that against people that I know, oh, that are not going to look to be throwing that uppercut counter. Uh uh. Okay. Faint, cross, let's, let's, let's really get him thinking about the high block, jab, he's going to be on a retreat because he did just throw a combination, boom, jab, real hook, landed clean, throw a real hook up top and landed, switch click, and that was the mistake that I was talking about, I didn't expect him to, I expect him to be on a retreat still, uh -uh. and what he did was, he stayed in the pocket, I threw a kick, he landed, the, uh, he landed, Two punches while I was throwing a kick and uh, it, it dropped me. I got the rock, but he got the drop. And I'm okay with this. I mean, it's just a, like I said, Palo Costa has very high recovery and a very high chin stat. So it isn't the worst thing, but it isn't something that I want to, uh, you know, to keep taking. Okay. We catch his kick. We want to jab, jab. And I want to throw, I want to. You know the animation where you throw them down? That's what I want to do because if you do get that, uh, you can. It, it does take a lot of their uh, short-term stamina. Jab, jab, cross. Okay. Boom. We both do the body round. I'm going to throw another one. Yep. Cross, jab, cross, lead hook to the body. He throws a high kick. I'm going to throw a cross. Ooh, Nice. Nice. Gotta be careful ducking though. I know I've been ducking a little bit. Boom. Woo, throw back to Okay, go round. No. So that was probably his round. What was that? Like I was saying before, um, that was probably his round because because of that knockdown he got. But if you look at our cardio, we're doing fine there. But our head health is not looking great. But I mean, it's Yoel Romero. Like, we have to expect this. We have to expect this. Nice. Ooh, I got to be careful going to his body. I don't want to eat an uppercut. Ooh, we hit him with the cross lead uppercut. We drop him. Ooh, we hit him with the knee. Put him on the cage. Put him down in town. Okay. Now I'm going to come off the cage and let's go. Boom. I got to be careful. I got to be careful. I want to go crazy, but I know they don't need that when we get another drop. I'm going to let him up. I'm going to let him up. Hook up top. We drop him again. Now this time we'll go for the ground and pound. I believe he's going to put us in a situation where we get the ground and pound. Bink. Pop. Oh, he evaded the first strike. I'm just going to go ahead and try to get up. Don't want to be on the ground. Don't want to get reversed. Don't want to have your well on top. Boom, one, two. We drop him again. Here we go. Bink. Let's try it again. Bink. 
Ding, ding, ding. Good fight. And that's it. Uh, strategical match. This is a Division 20 opponent. Uh, we, uh, we did have a good fight against. Uh, it was a very, very strategical fight. I kept everything focused. I, you know, I, I, it wasn't easy. I did get knocked down. I did get rocked. But uh, I kept my composure, stuck to my game plan, and I uh, was able to get the nice little finish in this fight. So, again, I'm doing things that you guys could easily do as well. So, why not do it? Like, I mean, I'm not doing anything extravagant and nothing crazy. And I'm, it's not like I'm beating up on somebody that's Division 8. You know, if you're Division 8, imagine how easy it would be to do what I'm doing to those opponents. If I picked Paulo Costa against people that are Division 8... No, chances are I would probably be looking to counter them a lot because people are I ain't saying Ladies just division eight. I'm basically saying lower ranked divisions. Those guys tend to throw uh crazy strikes and they leave themselves very vulnerable to be counted. But that being said, man, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next fight. And that'll probably be the last one, okay? So if you're enjoying, don't forget to hit the like button, guys. Let's move forward. Okay, so here we are, we're back. We're going against somebody that is currently division sixteen. Now, now we're going against a Izzy. We're going against a Israel Adesanya. So this is going to be an interesting one. And it's going to be hard. Uh, if he plays Izzy right. Now, I'm holding this Israel Adesanya to a standard that, uh, you know, I would hold myself to as far as how he plays. Will he play that way? We don't know. We're going to be here to find out. But we really got to get on the inside versus Izzy. Got to be careful. I got to really analyze what is he doing because, like, look at the foot. You can see just us walking around. Look at, look at my movement, then look at his. Like, he is sliding, literally sliding around. So, it's going to be um, nice low kick. Okay. It's going to be hard to get on the inside. I want to pressure him. I want to get him near the cage. But I also don't, like, if I, let's say I throw strikes, right? Boom. Let's say I throw a whole bunch of strikes. Now I have to either retreat or sit in the pocket and hope that I block his strikes that he comes back with. So because of that, right, I'm going to pressure with distance versus this guy versus pressuring with a whole bunch of strikes. Now I will tee off a little bit, you know what I'm saying, if he's close to like the cage or something. But for the most part, I just want to pressure with distance. But I also have to be careful because Izzy has a lot of tools that he can utilize. Boom, real hook to the body. He throws a nice calf kick, then throws a kick again. And I don't want the situation to be like it was in real life. I don't want to eat a whole bunch of kicks. So I'm going to be backing up here until I feel like I got my opportunity to move forward. Like now, I'm in the pocket. He throws a knee, knee, elbow. Boom, he works the legs. And that's the thing. Izzy has leg kicks. He can box a little bit. Uh, Izzy boxing isn't the best. But also, oh, I like this right here. I'm going to throw spinning elbow. But Izzy has kicks. He has knees. He has elbows. He has jump kicks. Like, Izzy has a lot of tools that he can utilize. We rock it here into the body. I feel like he's going to throw a knee. I feel like the knee is coming. Or something to push me back. There goes the knee right there. And uh, I can't personally be upset or mad at somebody throwing knees against me. Um, if I'm the one pressuring him, I don't really complain about knees. If I'm the one, I'm literally sitting in, you know, in their pocket. And look, this guy's working my leg help. And that's what I'm saying, man. Going against Izzy is hard with Paulo Costa. That's why whenever I play Izzy and I go against Paulo Costa, I kind of feel like this match is free. And this is a division, what was he, 14 opponent for division 16? But it, it's just the matchup. And if you play it right, it doesn't matter what division you're in. And that's why I always say, um, I don't care about division. Bro. You can be division 20 and play like a complete bum to get wins. Or you can be division 14 and you can play a matchup right and, you know, be successful. Oh, that was a nice uppercut. But it was worth it to get the body shot. Small price to pay for salvation. But you can see, man, it's going to be hard. Uh, dealing with Izzy because he has so many tools. So check that kicking. And that's going to be essential for us is checking kicks. Checking kicks and looking to counter. We know Izzy is a counter fighter, but for this matchup, we got to look to counter. He's chopped, he's chopped my lead leg up a lot with these calf kicks and just regular kicks as well. And we check the stats. You see, I only landed 13 strikes. I didn't throw much. I only threw uh, 39, but still, I landed 13. I did get a rock, but he threw 74 and landed 25. 
and I don't want to go too crazy with my strikes and me personally like I've always said before I'm not going to sit here and try to break his block to land strikes it's just not my style I'd rather keep it more so uh, based around setting up my strikes to land other strikes against this opponent he isn't skipping the screen I'll assume he's doing something but yeah I want to continue to land to his body I didn't I only landing through 13 strikes that just that just tells me that I didn't do too much damage to him but what I'm going to have to do is kickbox him. I'm going to have to, as hard as it's going to be, I'm going to have to kickbox this Israel Adesanya with Paulo Costa. And mainly what I'm going to be using is the switch kick. Nice front kick. I'm going to go with the low kick. Because it's going to be hard for me to reach him with my little arms and my bad footwork compared to Izzy. Boom, switch kick. Oh, I tried to, what I tried to do is sidestep. You guys can see he's trying to keep me away with these longer strikes. Front kick, I'm pushing back. Okay. Boom, real hook to the body. Oh, what I'm trying to do is... Is, um, <clears throat> when he throws that knee, I want to sidestep. If you can sidestep the knee and throw a hook counter probably get a rock and I'm trying to also stay in the pocket to where his leg kicks aren't doing too much damage he's gonna throw a knee okay nope look I'm really looking for that knee but if I sit on the outside I eat leg kicks so I really have to be careful okay there we go throw a hook up top another one there we go we get the rock boom boom go to his body switch kick landed to his body Oh, that was a big mistake. Him throwing that kick, I walked to the outside of it. Okay, nice. Oh, and like I said, Paulo Costa switch stance is only 80. So if I, he does make me switch stance, it's going to be hard on me. Boom, switch kick, with his body, he does a knee. Let's throw a high kick. Oh, nice. We, I believe we checked that kick, but I don't think it did damage to him. Okay, now I'm just gonna walk him towards the cage and then I'll exit. Go to knee. Yeah, Izzy's uh Izzy is a tricky puzzle. If used correctly. We check that kick, throw a hook up top, let's throw another one. We landed that one, boom. Land across as he was trying to throw a knee. Jab. Okay. I assume the low kick is coming. Okay, 40 seconds in the round. Boom, boom, one, two, three to the body. Let's do a switch as he's exiting. Nice. We catch the kick. Let's do a spinning elbow. And I'm gonna have to basically eat some punches in order to land some, some in this matchup. Like I can't try to play from the outside with Izzy. I gotta get I gotta get on the inside and try to land my strikes. And because of that, well, I'm gonna eat some punches. I'm gonna eat some kicks. I'm gonna eat some knees. Now this round, round two, he actually did land more than me. But if you see, look at the strikes. I threw, I landed 29 strikes, and 23 of them were significant strikes. So that was a. I think this round goes to me. Also, I got the rock, but he did land more than me. But again, move. I got 13 more significant strikes, and then also got a rock so i think this round went to me and also i did a little bit uh damage to his body my cardio is looking fine okay so he isn't trying to touch my glove anymore but i'll soon i mean he did touch my glove in round one so we check that kick real hook to the body cross boom i was looking for the knee as you guys seen i tried to sidestep okay he pushes me back we're trying to get back on the inside this Izzy, one, two, body, pick up top, let's throw a switch, ooh, the 83 piece covered it, ooh, ooh, if I landed that, if I landed that, it would have been damaged, okay,
Front kick, let's push him back. Pick up top, jab cross, knee hook. Nice. I gotta worry about the low kicks, man. I gotta worry about them damn low kicks. I still got two rounds to work. Switch kick, boom, land it clean. One, two, land it clean. One, overhand. Oh, boom! Drop him, let's go to the body. We wanna work the body. Right? He's okay. Now he's trying to wrestle. Because, of, because he's trying to wrestle, that tells me that I'm kind of breaking him. And that's what Paulo Costa does to the guys in real life. He breaks them with just immense pressure. Right? Jab real hook. Let's hook to the body. He goes and lead. Switch kick and get the rock. Overhand in the clean. Jab, overhand in the clean. Boom, get the right pound. Oh, nice switch kick. Boom, landed a hook up top for us, but he did land a nice little three punch combination. Oh, nice front kick. Jab to the body. Cross to the body. Cross up top. Block and you guys can see he is gas. Body, body. Okay, over here. Let me go let that round run there. <clears throat> now, as you see, he quit. He quit. It, it was it was probably gonna be curtains for him. Unfortunately, he quit, guys. We made this guy quit. Because we were just we was executing our game plan. Our game plan was to do what we do. Um but you also seen we had to fight adversity uh, in this fight because our leg was messed up. Uh, and then trying to get on the inside and land strikes on this Izzy. And it was tough, but you guys seen this round, man. I got three body rocks, two knockdowns. So it was it round one, you know, I was it was a figuring out. You trying to understand what he was doing. Round two, okay, it was it was okay, we got a little bit more figured out, now we're landing more, right? Cause round one we threw 39 round two we threw 73 then round four we threw 92 i mean i'm sorry round three we threw 92 we also got a lot of rocks you know what i'm saying three rocks to the body which really what we was focusing to do and then two knockdowns which uh which capped off the round and gave us an easy round it possibly it could have been a 10 8 and uh he was also gassed you guys seen at the end of the fight his animations well, his uh, running around animation was slowed down, and he was tired. And uh, I guess he did not want to play anymore, which is unfortunate, which is anticlimactic type of finish, especially to a video. But I can't do anything about that. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something. If you did, uh, it helped out the channel a lot if you left a like on the video, subscribed, and also be sure to turn on notifications so you don't miss any more uploads or any more streams, all right? But with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and sign off from here. I hope you guys enjoyed again. And stay up, stay blessed, and keep moving forward. Love you guys. Peace.